So here's a question I've actually heard before. Um, is it really contraindicated to practice yoga while hypermobile? Doctors, specialists continue to say this even while saying that other similar mindful movement modalities like Tai Chi or Qi Kung are good. So my short answer to this is no. Anyone can practice yoga as long as they can breathe, can move, and can focus their attention even a little bit. So here's my longer answer. If doctors and other specialists are advising hypermobile people to avoid yoga practice, that advice betrays at least two misconceptions. Number one, that yoga and asana practice are the same thing. And number two, that asana practice consists primarily of stretching or flexibility training, which is probably why they might recommend Tai Chi or Qi Kung over yoga. So I'll address number one in a separate video because that's actually quite a big topic. So let's look at number two. The very definition of asana, according to the Yoga Sutras in chapter two, uh, Sutra 46, is Stira Sukham Asanam. My teacher, TK Videsagachar, explained this in a really interesting way. For stira, he says, that's alertness without tension. And for sukha, relaxation without dullness. Now, I find this interesting because he's not just defining stira as uh, steadiness or alertness and sukha as ease or relaxation. He's also indicating that it's possible to take these ideas too far if they're not in balance with each other. For example, alertness can turn into tension if it goes too far. Relaxation can turn into dullness if it goes too far. So in the same way, asana practice that focuses too much on flexibility can easily promote instability, while the pursuit of strength can lead to rigidity if you take that too far. So if I'm hypermobile, my starting point is already too unstable, so I need to focus more on strength to achieve balance. This means I must not push into the end range of motion of my joints. I need to engage the muscles that cross those joints, that, that hold them in this unfamiliar position. This can be very difficult for an overly flexible person, both physically and emotionally. To set a boundary the body doesn't automatically know is there is actually quite challenging. Now, that's not the task faced by a stiff person like me when they practice asana. I actually have a bit of an easier job because my body is hitting boundaries all the time. My boundaries aren't hiding at all. All I have to do when I hit one is figure out how to deal with it by relaxing, by breathing, by letting go of or adjusting my expectations. Something I'd like to point out is that the anatomical consequences of going too far in asana are actually usually more severe for the hypermobile. If a stiff person pushes too far, they could incur an acute soft tissue injury like a pull or a strain, but that'll heal over time. Hypermobile students who push too far are more likely to develop chronic degenerative joint changes from an imbalance practice. Plus, they're also the ones in class who yoga teachers love to treat like their own personal Gumby toys. So that's why I always say that asana practice is, is far more dangerous for the flexible than the stiff in general. So to sum up, even if yoga were confined to asana practice alone, which is definitely not, a doctor who advises a hypermobile student to avoid the practice does betray a certain lack of understanding of asana. Clearing up these sorts of misconceptions is one of the major tasks we all share as yoga educators. So if a doctor told me that I could safely practice Tai Chi or Qi Kung but not yoga, I'd simply ask them to explain why. What's the essential difference between those disciplines that makes one of them safe for me and the other not safe? Perhaps they simply don't know that yoga is more than just stretching, or that some forms of practice require considerable strength, or that some systems of yoga are geared really to adapting the practice to the specific needs of the student. This is the sort of discussion I sincerely hope is possible within any healthcare relationship. I know as a yoga educator, I have these conversations all the time but sadly, they do seem to be disappearing from the world of mainstream medical care. I hope this has been helpful. Thanks for the question, and thanks for listening.